All right, here we're going to look at a uh, crane lifting a 200 kilogram beam into the air. We'll have the crane exerting a certain force on the beam as it lifts, and then we can look at the energy that was put into the force that lifted the thing versus the actual achieved um, change in energy associated with the change in gravitational potential energy to come up with the efficiency of this crane. So here we are, a 200 kilogram steel beam is lifted into the air by a, a height of 35 meters. So height is 35 meters. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and the mass of the beam is 200 kilograms. In order to achieve this, a force applied of 3,000 newtons was used. And here, we can imagine if the height is 35 meters, as in it started at zero and it went up by 35 meters, then the distance that this beam would have traveled through as it was moving up is 35 meters. So I can get my gravitational potential energy in my work. Gravitational potential is mgh, which is equal to 200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the 35 meters. So I would have achieved 68,600 joules of gravitational potential energy by lifting that beam. To do that, I lifted it with a force through a distance, 3,000 newtons times a distance of 35 meters. Or applying a work of 105,000 joules. So you put this much work into the system by applying that force, and the resulting work out or what you accomplished is you lifted the beam through the 35 meters. Where did that other energy go? Well, it could have been lost to the friction. Maybe this uh, beam swung s side to side as it was lifted. There could be a variety of ways in which energy was lost in that situation. Regardless, the efficiency is the ratio of the work that you achieved divided by the work that you had to input to make that happen. So 68,600 joules was what we got out of, putting in 105,000 joules. So that leads to an efficiency of 65.3%. So 65% of the input work went into the form that we wanted. I guess that's pretty good for a crane.